That was a heartbreaker last night for the Leafs. I mean, they grind their way back into that game to tie it at two. There's only four minutes left. They got all the momentum now. They're thinking they can, at the very least, get the game to overtime. But it's the same story it's been all season for this team. Whether it's the defense or the goaltending or both, it just doesn't hold up in the key moments of the game. Look, I definitely did not think Samsonov was awful in this one, but I do think from the beginning he just looked shaky. He didn't look quite right. And here's a perfect example of that. Just a couple of minutes before the Engvall winner for the Islanders, Barzell's coming down the wing with speed. It's a low percentage shot, yeah. Yes, but as a goalie, you still got to be ready for it to possibly come. Like, those slingers from the sideboard should be easy saves 10 times out of 10. He slings it on Samsonov, totally handcuffs him, and makes that shot look 10 times more dangerous than it ever should have. Look, he's an NHL goalie, I'm not going to come out here and say, oh, he's not ready and prepared for these shots to come. But man, does he make it look like he isn't a lot of times. And has definitely cost him, this year especially. Then you've got the defense who just gets caught puck watching way more than they should. The first Islander goal is a perfect example here. Barzell does a cutback and uses his speed to penetrate the middle of the ice. This is where it's ridiculous. One out of the five Leaf players on the ice is boxing somebody out. Everybody else in a Leaf sweater is puck watching Barzell, not taking away any lanes except Gregor who gets down to try to block a shot once Barzell's pass is already off his stick. Mike Riley has the entire square footage of Long Island to wind up for that slap shot. It goes off the post and again, because the Leafs were puck watching, Barzell's first to it for the easy rebound. On the second one, sure it's a bad luck play where you got a guy coming right out of the box, he's on a breakaway. That happens multiple times a season in the NHL. But Liljegren has to be more aware of the situation here. Sure, he's trusting that his two guys are going to come up with the puck on the boards there, but you've got to have some more situational awareness there. Then there's stuff like this that would just drive me absolutely nuts as a coach. Holmberg gets the puck, he's ready to break out through the neutral zone, and Barzal is pretty easily able to just kind of scoop it off of him. It's not always the big pizza up the middle or the bad giveaway that makes teams lose games. These little things, they add up, and they turn into bad habits, and that's very often the difference between winning and losing in the playoffs. That was a tough one to drop for the Leafs. They're in the wild card conversation. It's a much tighter squeeze for the playoffs right now than I'm sure they thought it was going to be. I definitely think they're still going to get in, but you look at who they're probably going to play. It's going to be either Boston, Florida, or the Rangers. All three of those teams are going to eat you alive if you're making silly mistakes like you made last night. You've got to think Brad Trilliving has something up his sleeve here, right? I've definitely heard my fair share of people saying, hey, this is not the year for the Leafs to go for it. And even if that is true, if you leave this team as is right now, they might be in for a pretty rough go come April. And for Trilliving, you went out last offseason, you made all those signings, Domi, Bertuzzi, Klingberg, I know that one hasn't worked out at all. Ryan Reeves. You also re-signed two of your biggest pieces in Austin Matthews and William Nylander. I really don't see Brad Living standing pat here. Whether it's a guy like Chris Tanev out of Calgary, you've been heavily rumored for months now. Or maybe it's one of the Philly guys in Sean Walker, Nick Sealer. Or maybe he looks at a goalie like, dare I say, Marc-Andre Fleury out of Minnesota. You've got to wonder when the other shoe's going to drop for Toronto here. Some people will point to the coaching, like, oh, they got to fire Sheldon Keefe, that's the real problem here. Look, nothing's off the table here, especially with the Leafs, but they just signed this guy to an extension and we're almost three quarters through this season, I'd file that one under pretty unlikely. It was also announced yesterday that Joseph Wall was not anywhere close to returning to game action, and it really does feel like around playoff time he'll be the number one guy there. So sure, right now you have no choice but to roll the dice with guys like Samsonov, Martin Jones. We'll also see what happens with Dennis Hildeby, the kid who's with the Marlies. But hey, rolling the dice isn't exactly something you want to do when you're in a wildcard spot. I'm not trying to incite fear in Leafs land here, but that's the reality here, and things are bound to get pretty interesting around Bratcher living and what he's going to do here. How nuts would those three first-round playoff series be? If it's Boston, we know the recent history between these two teams there, so that's just going to be top-notch entertainment value. With the Rangers, you've got two high-flying offenses who are dynamic and creative, going back and forth from Madison Square Garden, Manhattan to Toronto, Jacob Truba versus the Leafs in the playoffs. Then, of course, if it's Toronto, Florida, I don't even need to explain why that's a must-watch. Things are going to get real fascinating here down the stretch. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you want more Leafs content, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. You're awesome.